Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. So recently we had an official reveal of the 14th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver set to debut in the 60th anniversary specials later this year, and this got me thinking about a decades long debate among Doctor Who fans, that being whether the iconic device is even necessary anymore. Ever since its introduction in the late 1960s, some fans have argued that the Sonic Screwdriver has become too much of a narrative crutch, an easy cop out to cut corners. It's an argument that has only grown stronger during the modern era of Doctor Who, as the Sonic Screwdriver has become more and more prominent. So, since we're at the precipice of a whole new era of the show, I thought I'd weigh in on the subject and explore whether the Sonic needs to go, or if it's actually the perfect tool for the pacing of the show in the 21st century. Naturally, beware some spoilers, and without any further ado, let's get on with it. Handy little device, the Sonic Screwdriver. Got me out of a lot of scrapes. The year is 1967. Freelance writer Victor Pemberton is sitting over his desk, working away at his debut Doctor Who storyline, The Colony of Devils, which would see the second Doctor materialise at a North Sea refinery and battle sinister alien seaweed with his companions, Jamie and Victoria, the latter of whom would leave at the end of the story. As 1967 became 1968, this story would evolve into the currently missing Fury from the Deep. Towards the start of episode 1, the protagonists come across a mysterious pipe, which the Doctor decides to investigate. Now, in the original script, the plan was for the Doctor to use a regular everyday screwdriver to inspect this pipe. However, production assistant Michael Bryant decided it might be more interesting if the Doctor actually used a special sound wave based screwdriver instead. It was just a suggestion, and it could have easily been ignored. But instead, the idea was received enthusiastically. A prop was prepared for the so-called sonic screwdriver, and it immediately wasn't used because the serial was being filmed in winter, and the cold weather meant Patrick Troughton kept dropping the specially made prop. So instead, they used a whistle. However, after this point, the actual prop began to be used properly, and the sonic screwdriver would enjoy another 14 years of regular use within the show. Its functionality would expand, able to scan things, open doors, disable bombs, detonate mines, pretty much every issue can now be solved with the handy use of a sonic screwdriver. But on the 22nd of February 1982, this would all change and shake the very foundation of Doc 2 for years to come. 14 years is a long time, that kind of goes without saying. In the years after the Sonic Screwdriver's introduction, Doctor Who changed a lot. It still had the same general broadcasting format of multiple 25 minute episodes making up a single, mostly standalone serial, but pretty much everything else had changed. The show had changed from black and white to colour, along with the third Doctor era focusing more on Earth based stories with action packed episodes akin to spy movies. This shift to colour and more thrilling storytelling had its downsides, of course, losing the methodical, more science based atmosphere of the 60s stories, but it gained far more quality than it lost. Stories were more exciting, dramatic and ambitious as the show gained a new lease of life. The Sonic Screwdriver was one of the biggest beneficiaries of this storytelling change, being brought to the forefront as a brilliant tool the third and fourth Doctors could whip out on a dime and use for anything the script called for. It became a beloved staple of the show, scanning and zapping its way through a number of eras and producers. But after the fourth Doctor fell off a telescope and regenerated, head honcho John Nathan Turner decided it was time for another big change. You see, Nathan Turner had been working on Doctor Who in varying roles throughout those 14 years, and he had come to see the Sonic Screwdriver as a convenient plot contrivance, something that caused the writers to become more complacent and lazy with their scripts. And, well, that wouldn't do at all. The Sonic Screwdriver never fails. Nathan Turner wanted the script writers to be more imaginative with how the Doctor got out of scrapes and solved problems, which is an issue still persisting to this day, but we'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, Nathan Turner wanted to showcase the Doctor's own scientific mind and improv nature, so he told new writer Eric Sauer to write the device out in his serial The Visitation. And as it happens, Sauer had planned on removing the Sonic from his storyline anyway, and so the Sonic was destroyed and it would stay destroyed for another 14 years before its return in the TV movie. I feel as though you've just killed an old friend. Flat out destroying one of the show's most iconic items was a huge statement of intent by Nathan Turner. The storylines would become less about solving problems with a wave of a hand, and more about the Doctor using his brain, harkening back to those earlier days of the show. It's hard to tell how fans at the time reacted to this change, but the show managed to continue on just fine without the Sonic. 
The things it was usually used for were now being sold by other temporary gadgets, quick thinking, or simply not existing at all. Regardless of their varying episode quality, seasons 19 to 26 managed to maintain an action-packed contemporary pacing without needing to rely on the Sonic as a get out of jail free card. A lot of fans would point to the Hartnell era and the JNT eras as prime examples of why the show doesn't need the Sonic screwdriver. There are countless stories from these eras that perfectly balance all the ingredients of Doctor Who despite lacking that once crucial device. Earthshock, Caves of Androzani, Remembrance of the Daleks, Curse of Fenric. These are some of the most beloved Doctor Who stories of all time and not one of them featured the Sonic screwdriver at all, all coming after the visitation. Regardless of whether you agree with Nathan Turner's decision to remove it entirely, it's hard to argue against his reasoning. The Sonic had become a crutch. It had started to promote laziness and corner cutting from the scriptwriters, making the Doctor too invulnerable, so to speak. So if the show worked so well without it, why on earth did it get brought back? A Sonic probe? That screwdriver. With the exception of the unsuccessful 1996 TV movie, Doctor Who lay dormant for 16 years after season 26. And if 14 years is a long time, then you might be surprised to find out that 16 years is even longer. Crazy, I know. But by the time the show returned properly in 2005, the entire media landscape had changed dramatically. The idea of serialised 25 minute parts was long gone. Hell, Doctor Who had even started being behind the times even during the last few years of the classic run. The gap between eras of the show saw an increase in higher budget TV shows with 45 minute self-contained episodes. Russell T Davis's vision for Doctor Who took explicit inspiration from shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which favoured those standalone episodes playing into a wider story arc. It was all about your show being fast paced and snappy, sprinkling edgy and mature themes in between all the campiness, because you know, it was a bit of a 90s hangover. Gone were the days of weekly cliffhangers keeping the audience on the edge of their seats ahead of the next exciting part. Instead Instead you had 45 minutes of excitement bundled into one single story from start to finish. Sure there were still two parters usually at the end of a series, but Doctor Who no longer had that extra time to methodically build up mysteries or test the Doctor's brain with puzzles and traps. You know, you couldn't have people sitting in a prison cell for 10 minutes. And so the old tool would be dug out of Doctor Who's history to help shepherd it into its ambitious and uncertain future. Doctor Who was basically a completely different show now but it was a show perfect for the return of the Sonic Screwdriver. It really doesn't take long for the Sonic to make its reappearance in Series 1's premiere, Rose, with the Ninth Doctor immediately using it to break a lift to prevent the Autons following him and the titular Rose. In Classic Who, he'd probably have broken the panel open, fiddled with some wires, and then they'd move on. But the truth is, the show didn't have that extra minute or so to spare anymore. It had to keep moving, the pace had to stay snappy and engaging. So it's easy to just have him zap the panel of his magic wand and get moving again, you know, progressing the plot. This isn't laziness, it's not plot convenience. It's a good use of the Sonic to maintain momentum and work within the confines of that broadcast format. Instead, we get a nice character scene of Nine and Rose before and after the use of that device. They get to learn more about each other and speculate on what's going on. The Doctor doesn't overuse the Sonic in this episode, he uses an Auton head to track the villains down and he opens the hatch with his own hands, things that would later become Sonic reliant. Nine was still a very hands-on Doctor and the Sonic screwdriver just served as a nice narrative tool during series 1 to speed things up. And there are some episodes where it barely even gets used at all. It's the same with the psychic paper, the newly introduced gadget the Doctor can use to get past guards or security. He's able to flash it in people's faces and get access to anywhere with no questions asked. This is another consequence of the pacing. In a lot of classic Who stories, the Doctor has to dress up in costumes or disguises to bypass security. And yes, that was a fun aspect of those stories, but it just doesn't necessarily translate to the modern pacing of the show because the single episode format pretty much much halves the amount of time the narrative has to breathe. There's no time for the Doctor to dress up or create a big cover story, because you know, the segments in Classic Who would almost always end with them being caught and having to explain themselves or being thrown into one of those aforementioned prison cells. All this deception can be simply achieved with a flash of paper. You know, the future is now, old man. 
However, it's all well and good examining how the sonic screwdriver was used in Series 1. It was used just as sparingly and effectively in its first few appearances in Classic Who as well. No, the real reason fans argue about the Sonic nowadays is still the same reason it was a problem in the later years of Classic Who as well. After a few years of it being a fixture of the show, writers began to grow too reliant on it. In Classic Who, it took a little while for it to get overused and old, and it's the exact same case in New Who 2. Series 1 is like the perfect example of how to properly incorporate the Sonic. However, as the years went by, it began to be used more and more often when, frankly, it didn't need to be. Doors that could be opened by hand started being opened by the Sonic for basically no reason. Hell, there'd even be other Sonics like Sonic Lipstick, a Sonic Cane, a Sonic Pen, and even a Sonic Trowel, really lessening the magic and simplicity of the screwdriver itself, because pretty much everyone else got their own one. As early as the 10th Doctor era, the familiar over-reliance on the Sonic began to rear its ugly head, but the problem would really reach its peak in the 11th and 13th Doctor's eras, with the device often being used to, you know, like, tell the audience things that could already be seen with our own eyes. Like, they'd see a dead body and apparently they can only tell the guy is dead by scanning them with a sonic screwdriver. I feel like the reason the debate grew more prominent is because of how comically overused the sonic was during the 13th Doctor era specifically. By 2018 series 11, the sonic had been a staple of the show for 13 years, roughly the same amount of time it existed in Classic Who before its destruction. The 12th Doctor era had seemingly taken steps to minimise the use of the sonic, although it did this by simply swapping it for sunglasses instead. However, as you watch series 11 through to 13, you can't help but notice how often the 13th Doctor uses her sonic screwdriver, especially because of Whitaker's over-exaggerated style of bringing it out, which, you know, gets really incredibly annoying in my personal opinion. Like, come on, this isn't Harry Potter, it's not a wand. The episode, The Ghost Monument, is a particularly egregious example of these issues, and that's not just because the episode itself sucks. Without the TARDIS, the Doctor and her three companions are stranded on a dead alien planet and have to find their way back home. In the process, the Doctor uses her sonic to open hatches, which previous Doctors did with their hands, and she also scans deadly water, which could have, you know, been directly shown to be deadly in a way similar to the wormhole in Planet of the Dead. She also uses it to open a door of a massive handle. She scans a hologram, and she waves it around so frivolously you almost forget it's meant to be a specific scientific instrument. The way 13 uses a sonic is like using a rocket launcher to kill a tiny spider. It's incredibly unnecessary and frankly, it's overkill. The reason Russell D. Davis brought back the sonic screwdriver was to help with the pacing of the stories and cut out some of the fluff of Classic Who. It wasn't supposed to be used in the same get out of jail way that doomed it to begin with. But once again, the show and its writers grew too complacent. The Sonic was just there. They didn't seem to think about how to use it in a clever way. They just threw it in there to get themselves out of corners they themselves wrote in. It's a classic case of history repeating itself. The writers devaluing the Sonic by making it too gimmicky and convenient. The writers never gave themselves the chance to sit there and think of how 13 might use her natural intelligence and abilities to overcome adversity. Instead, they just literally hand wave all the problems away and it really detracts from some of the episodes and the value of the Sonic itself. Because, you know, you'd end up just rolling your eyes and being like, oh, here she goes again. When the Classic Who producers encountered this kind of lazy writing, they got rid of the Sonic entirely, like cutting a limb off to prevent an infection from spreading. And it worked. But it seems like the modern show hasn't learned from that at all. The 14th Doctor lost the 13th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver in a comic, but he's set to gain a brand new one in the upcoming episodes. I can't know what's to come in these episodes, but it's undeniable that Davis now faces an uphill battle trying to re-legitimise the Sonic Screwdriver after its gross overuse and misuse over the course of the last decade or so of the show. Nathan Turner destroying the Sonic forced writers to think outside the box and strive for imaginative uses of the Doctor's characteristics, similar to the simple solutions the first Doctor used to find, like, you know, using a magnifying glass to burn Nero's plans in the Romans. A convenient device like the Sonic Screwdriver is a very hard thing to balance. It's been shown to have so many uses by this point that there's not much it can't already do. You basically just have to get rid of it entirely in an episode to actually limit the Doctor. It's not like the Sonic was in its early days where it seemed to have a very specific use and had limitations. No, you can put that away. Bolts. 
Now it can do whatever the plot wants it to do, even if that seems outlandish. And that's a dangerous power to dangle in front of writers, like we saw all those years ago in Classic Who. It's like a cheat code, the easy solution that they don't have to put much thought into. And to be fair, it is hard to blame the writers because, you know, it is there. It's a fixture of the show and they probably feel an obligation to use it, creating this feedback loop of sorts where writers will continue to overuse it because that's what their predecessors did. So why change now? I've lost my sonic screwdriver. I feel absolutely lost without it. I love the sonic screwdriver. I think it's wonderful, a really nice thing in the show that's fun and you know it makes for great merch and it's just a nice gadget all around. But a break is definitely necessary for at least a little while. In its current state it has become massively watered down and overexposed to a level even classic Who never reached because of its more methodical pacing. The sonic was a wonderful thing for New Who to reintroduce when it was finding its footing, but the writers have definitely begun to take it for granted and not consciously think about when or how to use it effectively. There have been some absolutely fantastic examples of how to do it right, like Smith and Jones and the 11th Hour where the Sonic is outright destroyed and it forces the Doctor to use their brain to find alternative methods. At the end of the day, this is a super intelligent being over 2000 years old. They shouldn't have to rely on a little gadget to do everything for them. Would it kill them to do some manual rewiring every now and then? It's something I recall the 10th Doctor doing fairly often, pulling apart wires and tinkering with only minimal sonic use, and we were all kind of led to believe that the 13th Doctor would be the same as a tinkerer and an inventor, but no, she just waves it around everywhere. I can only hope that the return of Russell T Davis also sees a return to form for the sonic screwdriver itself either shelving it for Summer Series 14, or at least being more careful with its uses in the episodes to come. Because it's a fantastic little gadget, but it's in a very dire spot right now and desperately needs to be fixed in one way or another. It's almost ironic, I guess. The Sonic was first introduced to make things more interesting, but nowadays it just seems to make things less interesting because it's such a convenient plot device. But what do you think? Is the Sonic good the way it is? Does it need to change? Or does it need to go entirely? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And a special thank you to my Bantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Platinum level patrons, Maximilian Foreman and Nick's Games, and all my Gold level patrons, Boots, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn aka Line Vortex, Herner Verzog, Robert Hock, and Tom Azar. Thank you so much for your support.